Mic check, one, two, all right. Brothers and sisters, wanted to talk to you all about something that has been on my mind. There's a lot of talk about what is going on in the church lately. There's a lot of talk about what's going on in the world lately and what's happening with the elections, Project 2025, and what, what's also what's happening inside the church with uh, Dr. Vine and all these things, and uh, the talk about the sifting out and the shaking out and all these things. And I just wanted to talk to you guys about the real problem, um, the real issue here. In Revelation 13, we see that there is a beast, and then we see that there's a second beast. We see that there is a mark of the beast. And we see in Revelation 14 that, that uh, people are separated whether they worship the beast or they worship God. And there, there's a separation between uh, two groups of people. And I believe that there's only going to be two groups of people in the end times. It's not going to be um, uh, one prominent group here and another prominent group here and then somewhere in the middle. I believe that there's going to be a separation. There's going to be a clear distinction and a clear division. A clear division between two groups, those who worship the beast and those who worship God. So what is the real issue here? Is it Project 2025? Is it climate change? Is it uh, Kamala Harris? Is it, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the things, the issues that are going on within the church with uh, Dr. Vine and, um, you know, the, the, the uh, religious leaders? Now remember, when Jesus Christ was crucified, why was he crucified? What was the what was the issue when he was crucified? What what actually happened? Remember that the religious le uh, the religious leaders back then, what they did is they partnered up with the government. Okay, the religious leaders back then they partnered up with the government, the Roman government, Pontius Pilate, in order for. Christ to be crucified and killed. And I believe that um, Christ, his story or his testimony is typical for what's going to happen to God's people in the end. Remember in Revelation 13, it says that the beast is going to, um, is going to persecute the saints. And, and in Revelation 12, it says that the, that, 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 uh, the dragon is going to persecute the saints. Remember, in, in, in Revelation 17, the harlot is going to persecute the saints. Remember in Revelation 17 that the harlot partners up with, with uh, uh, the kings of the world to persecute the saints. So we have a religious entity and political entities that partner that become bed partners and because of, and because of that god's people get persecuted is this the main issue yes we certainly should be looking out for you know the the combination or the union of church and state because that you know if that begins that is the starting point for the oncoming mark of the beast we know that in revelation 13 it, it tells us that uh, there's going to be a system that is going to be religious, both religious and political. And we could see that in, in Revelation 13. Okay, in Revelation 13, let's go there real quick. In Revelation, in Revelation 13, it says, about the beast, it says, And they worshipped the dragon, and which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war? with him so worship that's religious war that's political it's a union of church and state it's a union of church and state worship war is that clear that's clear they worship the beast who is able to make war with the beast okay that's clear during jesus time during Jesus' time, was there a union of church and state? Yes, there was. Pontius Pilate was the state, 
and then the religious leaders, the, the 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 leaders of the Jews, the Pharisees back then, they were the church. It was a, a union of church and state. Religious figure, political figure. Do we see some of that happening today in our own very in my in our very own church? We see glimpse a, a glimpse of that happening, don't we? What happened with Conrad Conrad Vine? What what what, what was he saying? That the, the that the leaders of the church, some of the leaders of the church, should resign. Why? I'm going to let you guys think about that for a minute. But did you guys know that that's not really the that's not the real issue? Did you guys know that that's not the real issue? Did you guys know that the mark of mark of the beast is not the real issue? The mark of the beast is going to happen. Yes, we need to we need to watch out for the mark of the beast and we need to watch out for the union of church and state, but the real issue is not that. The real issue is sin. For a long time, that's been the 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 real issue. For a long time, from Adam and Eve to now, the real issue is sin. And all these other things, all these other things, mark of the beast, union of church and state, all these things that, that, are, that are happening, that are going to happen in the future, and, and actually presently happening right now, all of that, they're just side pieces to what the real issue is. And the real issue is sin. That's the real issue. Remember what Jesus Christ says in, Re in, in Revelation when he was talking to the, uh, to, to, the, to the seven churches? He says, to those who overcome, I will give to you what? The crown, I will give to you a crown, the crown of righteousness. Remember what he says? He says, take heed that no man takes your crown. And that crown is the crown of righteousness. Watch this. You guys would have to excuse me this morning. Um, I am dealing with, uh, I'm dealing with uh, uh, some allergy issues. But let me let me show you guys. Let me show you guys this. Um, Second Timothy, watch this. This is this is Paul speaking. Okay. And this is at the end of his ministry. Look at this. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full, make full proof of thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered. So this is at the end of his ministry. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And what is he waiting for? He says, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown crown of what the crown of gold crown of silver crown of thorns crown of righteousness crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day what day it says and not only not to me only but unto all them also that love his appearing so before jesus christ so at jesus christ's return he will give to us the what crown of righteousness only to those who love his appearing it doesn't matter if we know about the mark of the beast it doesn't matter if we know about all these other things all these other uh, you know prophecies that that are that are uh, that are taking place at this present time it doesn't matter what matters is do we have this crown of righteousness you can know prophecy all you all you want you can know prophecy all you want but at that day is christ going to give you that crown Will Christ give you that crown of righteousness? He says, There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. That day. Jesus Christ returned. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Watch. Watch. Watch this. 
Revelation 3 and verse 11, it says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man may take thy crown. So this is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said this right before. He says, Behold, I come quickly. Look, behold, watch. I'm coming quickly. Take heed. Hold fast. So that no man may take your crown. You know what that means? That means he can give your crown to someone else. But we must endure. But what is that crown? That crown of righteousness. What is righteousness? Let's go to, let's go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119 verse 172. I'm going, to show you, I'm going to show you guys what righteousness is. Psalm 119 verse 172. It tells us, um, My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. So in order for us to have the crown of righteousness, what, we, what must we do? Keeping the commandments of God. Well, how do we do that? We're not perfect. But who's perfect? Christ is perfect. Remember what he told the, the rich young ruler? The rich young, young ruler said, hey, how do I gain eternal life? He says, he, what did he say? Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments, he said. But then, but the rich young ruler, he's not perfect. So what, did, what was the prescription that Christ gave him? The prescription that Christ gave him was to follow him. He says, he says, go give to the poor. Sell what you have, give to the poor, and follow me. If you want to have eternal life, follow who? Follow Christ. Follow his steps. But how do we do that? How do we follow Christ? Every, every single thing that he did on earth, every, every, his character should be our character. We should be reflecting Christ's character. Because if we're not reflecting Christ's character, then I, we can't be righteous. Remember, he, he gave up his crown in order for him to get a crown of thorns. And by the way, thorns mean sin. So he became sin for us that he might give us righteousness. That he, that he might put on us the crown of righteousness. By the way, obedience... Commandment keeping or being righteous is not, uh, you know, it's not a, a, um, a surface level thing. You can be righteous with your behavior, true. But if that's it, if, the, if it doesn't go deeper than that, then you're lost. It's not just behavior. Anybody can behave, anybody can, beha anybody can keep the Ten Commandments in one minute. Anybody can keep the Ten Commandments, you know, d during, during a, a minute, a, a minute, uh, a span of a minute. Anybody can keep the Ten Commandments during a span of, a, of five minutes. But a, a whole lifetime? That you, you've actually changed? It's impossible without Christ. Righteousness is impossible without Christ. So just behaving and keeping the Ten Commandments out of your out of your behavior, yeah, that can be righteous, sure, but true righteousness comes when you are motivated by your relationship with Christ. When you are motivated to keep the Ten Commandments by your relationship with Christ, that is true righteousness. That's true righteousness. The true issue, the real issue in the end times is not the mark of the beast. The real issue in the end times is not whether there's going to be a union of church and state. Yes, we need to watch out for these things. We need to watch out for prophecy. The Bible says to watch and pray. Yes, that is true. But the real issue is sin. Jesus Christ says, will I find faith? Watch. Look what it says in Luke 18. In Luke 18. 
And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, through, uh, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, nevertheless. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Shall he find faith on the earth? What kind of faith is he talking about? What kind of faith is he talking about? Remember, when he comes, there's going to be a remnant. In Revelation 14, it tells us, watch this, in Revelation 13, in Revelation 14, so what kind of faith is this? In Revelation 14 and verse 12, look what it says. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. What kind of faith? The faith of Jesus. So when Jesus Christ comes back, will he find faith? Will he find people who will have the faith of Jesus? And what is the faith of Jesus? That he was faithful unto God. He was faithful unto his Father, even unto death. He was sinless even unto death. And some of us are saying, whoa, we can't be sinless. We can't be perfect. God is per Jesus Christ was perfect because He's Jesus Christ. Yes, but He came down and He condemned sin in the flesh. Remember Hebrews 2 says that he came down um, he, he came down with the seed of Abraham he came down as the seed of Abraham he took on him our, our sinful flesh in order for him to condemn sin in the flesh showing us that, that 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 it is possible through Christ that is why it says that that is why it says in Revelation 14 that the saints are those who have the faith of Jesus the saints are those who have the faith of Jesus. Blameless. Remember what it ta remember, remember what it says about the uh, about the the hundred forty four thousand that they were blameless. Watch the hundred four the hundred forty four thousand was faultless. They were without fault. Actually, Jude, Jude 24 says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Faultless. In Revelation 14, um, verse 5, Speaking about the uh, the the hundred four uh, hundred forty four thousand, it says that, that in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Is it possible to be without fault? Yes, it's possible. It's possible to be without fault. But we need to go through tribulation in order for us to do that. Remember, tribulation worketh patience. That's in Romans 5, I believe. Romans 5 and verse 3. Let's go to Romans 5. Romans 5 and verse 3. It says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that the tribulation worketh, that tribulation worketh patience. And remember, patience is needed in order for us to be the saints in Revelation 14. Here are the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God, righteousness. Keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. So the end time problem is not the mark of the beast, is not whether, uh, you know, Conrad, Vine, is not the, 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 the sifting out of the people uh, of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It's not the firing of the people who are uh, who are uh, in the Seventh Day Adventist Church that are the, that are the leaders, or 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 resigning. The leaders should resign. Yeah, I mean there there are certain things that you know um, there are certain things that are you know leaders are doing that it, uh, I don't agree with. But we have you know there's all this talk about all these things happening, um, especially in the church. But the true issue is sin. 
That's the core of the matter. The true issue is sin. Is Christ going to find faith when he comes back? That's the true issue. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you, Father, for giving us this opportunity now to study. I ask, Father, please give us victory over sin. Help us to claim that promise of yours and unto him who is able to keep us from falling, Father. We know that you are able to keep us from falling. Help us with our unbelief. Help us to know that you are more powerful than the devil. That your uh, that you have more power to cleanse us from our sins than the devil does have power to tempt us to sin. Help us to believe this, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. I just wanted to put this out there because I know that there are some, you know, some people are asking me about these things, uh, about what's happening in the church today and all these things that are happening out, you know, out in the world with the 2025 and Kamala Harris and Donald Trump and, you know, all these things that are happening. Let's focus on Christ. Let's focus on Christ. And by the way, guys, we have a fundraiser going on. We're, we're, we're raising funds. This ministry is going international. This ministry is reaching more and more and more people out there. And so we're raising funds so that we can make more documentaries. We're raising funds so that we can help uh, more people out there, that we can reach more people out there. We're raising funds so that it will equip us so that we can, so, so, so that we can inspire more people to get baptized and save people. There are many people out there, there are many broken hearts out there that needs Jesus Christ. And if, if we are at the forefront, if we are out there spreading the gospel, advancing the gospel, then it would be a tremendous blessing unto them that we can bring them to the kingdom. And so we are raising funds in order for us to reach more people, in order for us to make more documentaries, in order for this ministry to, for this ministry to stay afloat. If you guys want to help support this ministry, please do so. Please go to sfp.center slash support. Let me take you guys there. So if you guys go to sfp.center slash support, this is how you guys can support. You guys can support through PayPal, Cash App, or Venmo. This is how you guys can support. And also, you guys can also support by praying for us and praying for this ministry that we may reach more people out there and that more people out there will decide to be baptized for Christ. That we inspire people that we inspire people to be baptized, that we inspire people to follow God. That's the goal. That's the goal. So if you want to partner with, a, with us, please like and share this video. Please pray for this ministry and donate at sfp.center slash support. The link is in the description box below. Thank you guys again. Praise God always. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace and avocado grease.